Hello students, myself Manatush Day, your English help and on the go. Today I shall discuss a lesson from Footprints Without Feet, the supplementary reader which is taught in CBSC curriculum of standard 10th. The lesson under discussion today is the making of a scientist. Dear students, kindly visit my website after signing up with your mail ID and access the detailed contents of all the lessons of your syllabus including reading, writing, grammar, literature, NCRD solution, spoken English, English for competitive exams, podcasts and a library full of resources on speaking and listening skills, current affairs, infographics and so on. Anyway, I am going to focus on today's lecture, the theme of the story, plot developments and finally I shall recapitulate the whole lesson for you. So let's begin. The story highlights the specific bent of mind required to become a scientist. An intelligent mind and an innate curiosity coupled with insatiable passion and tenacity to explore and excel are a must ingredient to develop a scientific temperament. The making of a scientist is the story of Richard Abright, a scientist in the field of molecular biology and biochemistry, whose childhood attachment for butterflies opened up an altogether new world of science for him. Let's move on to significant developments in the story. To begin with, Richard Abright's hobby of collecting butterflies. Beginning in kindergarten, Abright collected butterflies with the same determination that has marked all his activities. He also collected rocks, fossils, and coins. He became an eager astronomer too, sometimes stargazing all night. Let's move on to the segment when in the story we find how his mother encouraged him in his curiosity for experimentation. He had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind. He also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning. She took him on trips, bought him telescopes, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials and other equipments and helped him in many other ways to foster his scientific spirit. She got him a book, The Travels of Monarch Tan, a book about the migration of monarch butterflies. Thus his mother was instrumental in germinating the seeds of curiosity and experiments in his mind. Now let's see how Ebright developed his interest in monarch butterflies after reading the book which his mother bought for him. Following the instructions in the book, The Travels of Monarch Tan, which his mother gave him, he started to tag butterflies and even began to raise a flock of them to study butterfly migration. By the time he was in the second grade, Ebright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown. His interest in collecting butterflies would have been over had he not read that book which his mother presented him. The book which highlighted how monarch butterflies migrate to Central America opened the world of science to the eager young collector. At the end of the book, readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations. They were asked to tag butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick A. Urquhart of the University of Toronto, Canada. Ebright's mother wrote to Dr. Urquhart and soon Ebright was attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarch. Anyone who found a tagged butterfly was asked to send the tag to Dr. Urquhart. So, the next step for Ebright was to raise a flock of butterflies. He would catch a female monarch, take her eggs and raise them in his basement through their life cycle from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult butterfly. Then he would tag the butterfly's wings and let them go. For several years, his basement was home to thousands of 
monarch butterflies in different stages of development. Now let's find out how Ebright's approach towards conducting uh, experiments changed. In the seventh grade, he got a hint of what real science is all about when he entered a county science fair and lost. His entry was slides of frog tissues which he showed under a microscope. He realized the, that winners had tried to do real experiments, not simply make a neat display of projects. He started making experiments with monarch butterflies. With a stack of suggestions for experiments which came from Dr. Urquhart, Ebright started his experimental works. Those experiments kept Ebright busy all throughout high school and led to prize project, prize winning projects in county and international science fairs. For his eighth grade projects, Ebright tried to find the cause of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years. Ebright thought the disease might be carried by a beetle. He tried raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles. Although he did not get any result out of this experiment, but he ended up winning in county science fairs. For his science fair projects, the following year, he tested the theory that Vaisri butterflies copy monarch butterflies. The theory was that Vaisris look like monarchs because monarchs don't taste good to birds. Vaisris, on the other hand, do taste good to birds. So, the more they look like monarchs, the less likely they are to become a bird's dinner. Ebright's project was to see whether, in fact, birds could eat monarchs. The project was placed first in the zoology division and third overall in the county science sphere. Now, let's see how Ebright developed his theory on the life of cells. In the second year at high school, Ebright tried to discover the reason behind the 12 tiny gold spots on the monarch pupa and in the process discovered an unknown insect hormone. Ebright and another scientist student showed that the spots were producing a hormone necessary for the butterflies, butterflies full development. This project won Ebright first place in, in the country fair and entry into the International Science and Engineering Fair where he won the third place for zoology. As a high school junior, Richard Abright continued his advanced experiments on the monarch's pupa. Dear students, when the caterpillar is full grown and stops eating, it becomes a pupa. Anyway, that year, year Abright's project was first place at the International Science Fair and gave him another chance to work in the army laboratory during the summer. In his senior secondary, he went a step further. What he did was he grew cells from a monarch's wing in a culture and showed that the cells would divide and develop into normal butterfly wing scales only if they were fed the hormone from the gold spots. The, that project won first place for geology at the international fair. A year and a half later, during his junior year, Ebright got the idea for his new theory about cell life. It came while he was looking at X-ray photos of chemical structure of a hormone. The photos gave him the answers to one of biology's puzzles, how the cell can read the blueprint of its DNA. DNA is the substance in the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity. It determines the form and function of the cell. Thus, DNA is the blueprint for life. Ebright and his college roommate James R. Wong worked all that night drawing pictures and constructing plastic models of molecules to show how it could happen. Together, they later wrote the paper that explained the theory. If the theory proves correct, it will be a big step towards understanding the processes of life. It might also lead to new ideas for preventing some types of cancer and other diseases. His high school research into the purpose of the spots on a monarch pupa eventually led him to his theory about cell life. Now let us know, besides being interested in science, what other areas of interest Richard Abright had. 
besides having interest in science, Abright also became a champion debater and public speaker and a good canoeist and all-rounder outdoor person. He is also an expert photographer, particularly of nature and scientific exhibits. In high school, Abright acknowledged his social science teacher who opened up his mind to new ideas. Abright was competitive and wanted to win because he wanted to do the best he could. He wanted to win for the right reason. It is one of the ingredients in the making of a scientist. Now, let us recapitulate the lesson briefly and wind up today's lecture. Richard Abright collected butterflies and also collected rocks, fossils and coins. He became an eager astronomer too. His mother encouraged his interest in learning. She took him on trips, bought him telescopes, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials and other equipments and helped him in many other ways to foster scientific spirit in him. As a student, he earned top grades in school. In the second grade, Abright collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown. His collection of butterflies would have ended if his mother did not get him a children's book called The Travels of Monarch Ten. The book told how monarch butterflies migrate to Central America, open the world of science to the eager Abright. In the seventh grade, he got a hint of what real science is when he entered a county science fair and lost. In eighth grade project, Abright tried to find the causes of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years. He tried raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles. He Abright's project was to see whether birds would eat monarchs. Pro this project was placed first in the geology uh, vision and third in county science fair. In his second year in high school, Richard Abright began the research that led to his discovery of an unknown insect hormone. Thus, this experiment, thus his experiment led to his discovery of the new theory on the life of cells. DNA is the substance in the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity. It determines the form and function of the cell. Thus, DNA is the blueprint of life. Besides having interest in science, Abright also became a champion debater and public speaker and a good canoeist and all-round outdoors person. He is also an expert photographer, particularly of nature and scientific exhibits. Please go through the text in detail and be inspired and develop the curiosity and undying passion for research and experiments. That's all about the discussion on the lesson, The Making of a Scientist. For NCRT solution of this lesson and extra questions and answers and HOTS questions and answers, visit EnglishWithTheDifference.com. Till I come with another video from your syllabus, kindly keep watching my channel and of course share my video and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet kindly subscribe it now and click on the bell icon for notification of every new video that i upload for you thank you dear students thanks for watching take care